Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another installment of Tea with Uga. Today I'm having a garam masala mm -hmm. from Dale's Ford, it's loose leaf. And um, this video is overdue because three weeks ago, in my last video, I had told you that the next topic would be how do you keep your energy levels when you have a very demanding job. And guess what? <laughs> I think I kind of jinxed myself because I ended up having the month from hell. So the whole month of October was completely out of this world. It was busy. I was waking up at 6 or 7 a.m. and then going to bed at 1 or 2 a.m. So I did have very, very short nights for an extended period of time. This is something you could do when it's three days or four days in a row. But if it's been the entire month of October, you can understand why I look like this. I have no makeup on. I have put on some lip balm and I tied something on my hair, you know, just to make an effort. But um, I thought it would be good to have this topic today. So what happened to me in the month of October is that um, I had a field work kind of um, portion to what I do. As many of you guys know, I'm a management consultant, which means that I get to work with my clients trying to solve some issues. My current client is a retailer. That means that they have physical stores and they also have warehouses. So part of the work that I need to do is kind of make their warehouses lean. For some reason, we thought it would be good that we actually not only tell them what stock needs to go out, but actually to go and physically remove it. So I've had quite a few long days where every day I go to a store and physically remove all the stock that needs to be out there. It is usually fun for a day or two, but once you've done it 10 times, it's just very physically taxing, especially that there is the expectation that you still do the other job that is not manual. So that's why I've had very long days and nights, um, combined with the fact that um, the project manager was a bit stretched thin, uh, he was a bit bursting at the seams and you know freaking out all the time. I think it's okay, he will grow into his role. We all go through these phases and sometimes when we are in a stretch role, we just don't know what our limits are and so we tend to freak out and not ask for help. But I think it's just a phase because he's a really good guy and I think he's able to rise above it. But let's just say that it was very physically and mentally taxing for all of us in the team just because there was this much work to be done with this many people in this much time. So it was a bit... Mm, too much. So, what have I done to still be alive while sleeping 3-4 hours a night for the past 3 weeks? First thing that you need to do is you want to prioritize things in your life and so some things will have to take a back seat and you should not feel bad about it. In my case you would have probably noticed that for the last two Saturdays I didn't have a video. This is the third Saturday that I was not going to have a video but I decided you know what I'm gonna film this, I'm gonna edit it and then you're gonna have a video later on Saturday rather than none at all. But um, it takes me a long time to film and edit my videos, especially the editing part. And while you just get to watch a 15 minute video, I probably spent an hour or two editing it. So I just could not afford that kind of time in the past days. It was just a bit much. So that took a back seat. Um, if you have uh, social obligations that don't necessarily impact your energy level, then you might as well skip them. Because sometimes there are a few people, like I have a person working with me in the team, he needs to be surrounded by people. He needs to go to social events because that's how he recharges his batteries. So even after a horrible week at work, he would still want to go home and actually find 10 people in his living room and he would be very happy cooking for them and everything because that's how he uh, gets back to his normal energy level. For me, that would be further draining. So if I had any social engagements, I would have probably cancelled them. Um, I still hang out with my sister. Uh, last week, I spent three hours cooking her a tagine. Uh, today, she's coming to my place. Tomorrow, I'm going to her place. So that's the kind of low-key chilling that helps me recharge my batteries. But like going out, shopping and things like that, I wouldn't be up for it just because I'm, I'm just too tired. So these are the things that you just put on the back burner. Other things are assessing your standards, reassessing your standards. Now, especially for some women, there is this expectation that everything should be perfect because of the month. Mm 
because of the multiple expectations um, regarding the roles that they play in society. So um, they would be expected to be on top of their work, have their kids looking good, have good grades at school, a clean house, homemade meals and things like that. Now, if you can afford it, this is the time to throw money at things uh, or to just let them go. So for me, it's two things. If you want to keep the same standard of, of I don't know, cleanliness, etc., 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 that's when you outsource it. For me, I have a very small place. Uh, not small, no, no, it's fine. For me, I have a self-contained space, which means that because of the amount of things that I currently have, when it's not cleaned and, and, and neatened up uh, for one or two weeks, it shows dramatically. So what I did is that I hired a cleaning person to come and just neaten it up. That means that it's one less thing that I didn't have to worry about. And yes, it would have been just two hours every two weeks, but these two hours every two weeks means that when I come back, I just get to go and sleep. And it's okay if the things build up, because anyway, it's not much. Um, if I weren't able to pay the 20 pounds or 25 pounds to get the two hours cleaning every two weeks, I would have probably just let things pile up because that's the part of either you outsource or you let your standards down. Same thing with food. It doesn't have to be a complicated feast. If it means that I eat the same simple thing every night, I will do that because this is the time where I don't want to be making decisions. I don't want to be cleaning pans after I'm done, etc, etc. So I have been eating very simple things whenever I was at home. But then all the other time I was obviously eating outside because I was working at the client. So another compromise. Then it came to my beauty routine. And you guys know I really like my beauty routine. I really like being stylish. I like having good skin. Because it's something that I have suffered with for many, 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 many years. And so, for me, the worst part was actually having to downgrade my skincare just because I couldn't keep my eyes open. When I had to leave my, my place at 6.15 a.m. so that I can be in Edmonton Green, which is an hour and 20 minutes away from where I live, I'm like down in Belgravia, and it is way north of London, I just couldn't be bothered to put on any makeup or skincare or anything because the night before I had gone back to sleep at 1 a.m. So it's just it's just the level of energy. So what I have done is that I have just picked a few things that have simplified my life. And I thought, you know, this portion of the video could be a little bit more products oriented. And I could show you some of the things that I have just changed recently. So I have here next to me a selection of products that I just have been using recently and I thought I'd walk you through it. First thing is my face wash. What I have done is that before, whenever I would be home, I would actually properly wash my face, you know, double cleanse and all that stuff. What I started doing is that because I'm so tired and because I have spent the entire day moving boxes in the in a warehouse, I would just hop in the shower just to wash all the day's grime. But I would also keep this. It is just a very small um, face wash. It's called Pure Skin Face Wash by Balance Me Natural Skin Care. I had gotten this in a, I think in a Look Fantastic box, but this thing just lives in my shower now. And so instead of having two or three steps, when I'm showering, I would just wash my face. And that has been a time saver. It's a very small thing, but it just helps. Same thing for all my beauty products on the go. So whenever I'm traveling, I used to have miniatures of everything. But recently I have just started using this uh, Ulla Henriksen the Clean Truth Forming Cleanser. So this is a very small uh, size that I have bought when I was in um, when I was in Copenhagen with my sister um, because actually I lost my suitcase and I needed to buy small toiletries and I thought, you know what, I might as well buy something that I've never tried before and I've always wanted to try Ulla Hendrickson. So I bought this and it's something that you can use to remove your makeup, to cleanse your skin and it smells like mandarin so it adds a little bit of sweet citrus to an otherwise grimy day. So I just use this morning and night, whether to remove my makeup or to do the second cleanse, I just use two layers. So instead of having to worry about what cleanser I have, it's just a single bottle, morning and night, and that has simplified a lot of things. I've also been wearing less makeup, but on the days where I'm really, really in a hurry, what I did is that I just prepared a standard makeup bag, which meant that I kind of had to get some doubles 
which that wouldn't be a big issue I have lots of makeup and just put it in here and so for those days when I wake up at 6 a.m. and I just have to run I would just have my makeup bag on me and after I start feeling a bit more human at 6.30 or 6.45 I might slap on some makeup so that I don't feel like I am not ready for the work days but to be completely honest there are also days where I have gone makeup free because I couldn't be bothered but I'm just throwing it out there because spending the extra 10 minutes to do my makeup and skincare just felt like a hassle when you have only had four hours of sleep and it's the sixth night in a row, in a row that you do it. Then for moisturizer, um, if you have watched my very my most recent skincare routine, I used to use the niacinamide and have a couple layers of moisturizers and emollients and things like that. But recently, I am lucky if I even wash my face. So I have just been using this one thing. It is the Caudalie Venusource. It's the moisturizing sorbet cream um, and I just apply it morning and night so whenever I actually remember to apply moisturizer that would be it no no toner no niacinamide no oil nothing just this because my skin is dehydrated I am dehydrated I might as well just use something if at all and then the last thing that I wanted to mention in beauty is this thing it's from Essie I have posted it on Instagram so what happened is that last time that I was hanging out at my sister's place, she showed me uh, an ad that she, she saw in a magazine for a new essay, Treat Love in Color. It is apparently a strengthener for your, uh, for your nails. You don't need to use a base coat or, or um, top coat. You just apply two coats of this and you're good to go. And so I just thought, you know what, that is exactly what I need. I haven't worn nail polish in ages just because I can't be bothered. But if it's something that I can wear and it's close enough to my nail color, so that when it chips it doesn't look horrible I might as well use that so I just started using this it's completely chipped uh, because as I said I have been carrying a lot of heavy objects all day long and I'm going to just remove this and then apply two more layers but just the thoughts that I can toss this in my bag and just apply two layers and feel kind of polished see what I did there? polished, polished yeah. um, that was something that I really appreciated just you know as a you know, I look like a lady for once. But, there are also little comfort things. So for me, I have been carrying some tea bags just because I know when I'm in the warehouse, um, I don't always have the best um, selection of food, etc. So I have been living on Red Bull and coffee, to be completely honest, which is not good. And so I just decided that if I have actually my own tea bags then I can get hot water from the staff room because every store has a staff room and I started doing that a little bit more and even if I've only done it three times in the entire month of October those three times it felt like a hug to have a proper hot drink rather than just a Red Bull and looking like a lunatic trying to stay awake and then the other thing that I did is that because I have to work in a team room at the client I just got this thing, it's uh, from, what's the brand called? It's called the brand is called Vins, and I think it's, an, it's normally an expensive brand, because I got this for £100 from TK Maxx, and I think the original price was something like three times or four times that, so something that was at least £300 or £350, and it's just this poncho like this, and it's made of cashmere and silk. 100%, 70% cashmere, 30% silk, and it just looks like this. And I just apply, I put it on like this, and wrap it on. And when I'm working, it just feels very cuddly, very cozy. And the reason why this was important for me is that sometimes we have, actually not sometimes, every single day we have a very long day. We finish at the client at about 7 or something like that, just so that they don't kick us out. We go and we have an extended dinner, which I'm not a fan of, but for everyone else in the team, apparently it helps them recharge their batteries, so they think that it's a good thing to have a long dinner. But then, at like 9.30 or 10, we start working again, right after dinner, and we work in the lobby, and it's super cold, and I just... I have been wearing my work clothes all day. It's just having something where well, I don't look wrapped up like a kid. Like I try to make it a little bit fine. Um, I just wear this. Sometimes I will change my shoes. Sometimes I'll take off my contact lenses and wear my glasses. But just being able to be slightly, ever slightly more comfortable. 
so that you can push the next three or four hours until one or two a.m. and then go and crash in bed after you shower. So you just the little things that make a difference. So this video is gonna be a bit long, but my takeaway from it is if you have demanding jobs. First thing, don't apologize for it because I know that sometimes people will always tell you, oh, you know what, if you worked smarter, you could probably do a 9 to 5. No, some jobs are not a 9 to 5. A lot of the people who are doing these jobs are smart, whether regardless of the definition of smart that we use, but they are. That means that it's not that they work in 16, 18 hours a day because they are unable to be productive. It's because the sheer amount of work gets to a point where it's no longer compressible, such that you're able to smart your way out of it. It's just a lot and with little resources, so you have to put in the hours. So when you do that, don't be upset at people who can't understand that there are jobs that are inherently not meant to be 9 to 5. So. It's because it just takes a lot of energy trying to explain that to people. So just let them be. If they say, oh, I'm probably sure I could do it, uh, you know, faster, or I could finish and still go to the, to the gym every day or go to see my kids, just tell them, yeah, I'm happy for you, and move on. Some, some battles are not worth fighting. The second thing is, it's your life, your life choices. So if you have to lower certain standards of yours, just so that you can cope with the hard, um, with these hard periods, go for it. The, don't don't actually think, oh, if I don't clean my kitchen floor every single night, then I'm a bad mom. Because, yeah, you can't have it all, and it's fine. It's your kitchen floor. And then, the last thing would be, don't feel the obligation to put on a brave front or to be always happy. Because sometimes people say, oh, I, I, you're always energetic and blah, blah, blah. I don't recognize you and you look, you look so sad. I'm not sad, I'm tired. Or more specifically, I'm on low battery mode. I know that after you go, I'm going to still have to work for six hours. So I'm really saving my, my energy because I have to work these six hours while you go into the gym and going for a walk and doing your violent class and cleaning your kitchen. So... Yeah, I'm not always I'm not always like very energetic to give off all that kind of energy, and it's okay because you manage your energy, and yeah, best of luck because I know how hard it is. I am doing it. I am going through it. Um, so don't worry much about it. Don't try to put on a very brave front. Take care of yourself. Try to eat the best food you can eat. I know it's easier said than done. I've been living on just junk food and Red Bull and I need to fix it, I will fix it but if you can, by all means take care of yourself because this is typically when right after you're done with the stressful period you signal to your body that actually the stressful period is gone and that's when you get the worst cold or stomach ache or migraine or something like that so just be aware of that and Build in a lot of free time. Don't over, don't underestimate the time that it takes you to recover and to do things. For me, I'm filming this video a bit late in the day because I foolishly thought that um, I would wake up on time. But here is the thing. So I had a meeting with my mentee. He's, he came to London. He's British. He came to London for his graduation. And I thought I would have a catch-up with him because I haven't spoken to him in months. And... Um, and I said, yeah, I'll meet you at 11. I thought that 11 was quite late. You know, I was giving myself time to recover and sleep. My alarm went on at 7. I turned it off, went back to sleep, woke up at 11.05 and found a text from him at 11.03 that he was already at the station. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't believe that happened. So I went with him and we had breakfast and, yeah, he's very happy now. And um, I got back and then I thought, you know what? There, there are some other people I need to be checking on. All the people who actually have been asking me, where are you, Uga? And I just thought, you know what? I will probably look disheveled. I will look pale. My eyebrows will be a mess. I'm a bit nasally, nasally because I have a um, sort of a cold. It's not really a cold because I'm not sneezing or anything. It just, you know, when your whole body feels down because I'm, I'm really run off. And I would probably not be as cheerful as you as usual, and people might even 
think I'm grumpy, but then by now anybody who's been following me for a while knows that, yeah, I put it out there as it is, so, yeah, I really hope that this video is gonna make sense, that some people will still get some advice from it, and I will try to film another video that will be much, much more energetic next week, when I actually feel better. I still have one more week of this, of going to the store, of waking up at 6 a.m. and sleeping at 1 a.m., but after that, as of November, I should go back to a normal job um, job uh, rhythm. And so when the cadence is back to a human level, then I should be looking more human than this. In the meantime, I'm just going to sip on my masala tea, edit this video, and I will see you in the comments in an hour or so. Take care.